first thing they said was, oh, you're, you're gonna see Blue. She hasn't really had a visitor. We are Mark and Sean, and this is Blue Story for GeoBeats. We were looking for a deaf dog in the area, and then we found two at a family dog rescue in San Francisco. When she walked into the little room that we were allowed to meet her in, she was just so vibrant, full of life. She immediately took a strong affinity towards Sean, and the rest is pretty much history. Blue is my fourth deaf dog that I've had. Wow. And first one that Sean and I have had together. Her original owner reached out to us. She lived with her for six years, and then they sent her to the shelter after they had to move. Unfortunately, they lost their home that they owned and uh, had to go to a rental situation, and pit bulls are not very often accepted in rental situations. At the shelter, she was one of their longest residents. It took a while for her to kind of get comfortable around us because she didn't know if we were going to like send her back to the shelter or what our plan was. She just kind of stared at us for a long <laughs> time. In fact, um, we the first car ride we took her on um, to the beach, which was like a couple days after getting her, she was petrified. Yeah. I mean, just shaking in the back. Fast forward three years later, car rides are her favorite thing in the world. After she got comfortable, her little personality bloomed fully. I think she's kind of like my spirit animal, I guess. <laughs> I know when she's anxious and when she's happy and sad, and we just read each other really well. We also have this communication style where I can move in a certain direction and she'll know where we're going. When we're on a walk, she'll actually sniff my feet to tell which direction we're going. I don't really know how she does that, but she does it all the time. And uh, lots of finger wiggles to tell her that she's being good. If I give her this stern look, she'll know I need to sit down and chill out. We also have a trainer who taught us to, whenever she stretches, that we should also like stretch wide. Just so that anytime she's anxious, we can stretch and tell her you can relax and calm down right now. She's taken to that really well. Her blue eyes are just these like ever presence in our lives, wherever you are. You want up here? You can just turn around <laughs> and you know that you're staring right at you. No, this is where I sleep. Her deafness probably only limits her in her ability to establish relationship with dogs because there's a lot of small verbal cues that I think dogs give to each other that she and my other deaf dogs that I've had have not been able to pick up on. She's got a fear of missing out, so she just wants to be near you, but she doesn't always want to be touched. Deaf dogs here with their hearts. Going forward, I don't think I'd ever not have a deaf dog just because they're so unique and special. Any of those firework holidays? Nothing. No problems at all. <laughs> we love her so much. Yeah.